Do you guys remember the talk that you had with your parents growing up? You know, the talk, the one where you sat down with your parents and they told you what to do if a cop ever stopped you. Where to put your hands, how to be overly obedient, make sure to follow any direction that they say, always say yes sir. No? Did your parents have a different talk with you? I know mine had a different talk with me. Why didn't they have that talk with me? Well, because we're a white family living in America and we benefit from white privilege. We never feared a run with the cops the way that black people do. And that conversation that I mentioned is one that many black kids have to have with their parents at a very early age. And that's just the tip of what having white privilege means in America. So today I'll be discussing what white privilege is, how you can recognize your privilege, and how you can use it to be an ally to the black community in America. My sources for this speech are my own experiences being white in America, the book White Privilege, The Myth of a Post-Racial Society by Calwant Bhopal, Racism, Racism Without Racist by Edward Vanilla Silva, and Rethinking the Colorline by Charles A. Gallagher. So first, the scholar and feminist Peggy McIntosh defines white privilege as an invisible weightless knapsack of special provinces, maps, pop spurts, co code books, visas, clothes, tools, and blank checks. She goes on to say it's like having unearned assets that she can cash in any day. Emphasis on unearned, because in simpler terms, these advantages that we have in America aren't ones that we earn. It's just ones that we have simply because of the color of our skin. What I've noticed is that sometimes these advantages are small things. Like when I was applying to colleges, I didn't have to worry about if the college I was applying to was diverse and whether or not I would fit in at that college because it wasn't that diverse. I can go to Walgreens and get band-aids and I know that they will have a color that will match my skin. I've always seen movie characters growing up that have looked like me and I can see myself in. Like my favorite movie growing up was The Hunger Games with Katniss who had similar hair to me. And I've always been able to find a hairdresser that could do my hair and I wouldn't have to worry about the style of the hair. However, sometimes these advantages are much larger. From Rethinking the Color Line, here are a few stats. As of 2017, black unemployment rates were double that of whites. Black drivers are more likely to be searched by police. 50% of the hate crimes in America are anti-Black. And as you've probably seen in the news with the recent Black Lives Matter movement, Black people are more likely to be victims of police brutality. Now I could go on and on and on with all these stats, but the bottom line is that Black people unfortunately have a disadvantage in this country. So recognize if you are white that you are privileged. Don't be ignorant. Read and educate yourself with the sources that I listed or even just through social media. There are so, so many tools if you just look. We need to stop saying, well, my life is hard too, and start recognizing that even though our lives may be hard, it's not always because of the color of our skin. So once you do recognize this privilege, how can you use it to be a good ally to the black community? First, you can listen and amplify the black voices in your life. And if someone is too ignorant to listen to these voices because of their own racism, use your white privilege to try to get through to them. Yes, they may be too ignorant to listen to a black voice, but maybe they will listen to you and hear what you're trying to say. Also, don't be afraid to step in in, system, in situations of injustice, whether that's just hearing someone say a racist joke or whether that's as extreme as seeing police brutality right in front of you, either stopping it or recording it. And vote, vote for people that don't help out with more racist pol policies. So to conclude, I'm not saying that your life isn't hard. We've all faced hardships. We've all faced unfairnesses, but not all people have faced these unfairnesses due to the color of our skin. Remember that talk that I was talking about? Maybe we can be the generation that starts having a different talk with our kids about how the color of their skin might give them more privileges, about how they should treat people equally, no matter how different they look. So. Remember that you have privilege. Identify it and be an ally. Thank you.